See, I really wish I had the beep again. I know I brought this up on the the, the like <laughs> vivid section yesterday, but like the dance, it feels righter to me when I have a little cue, so I know what I'm fucking with. And right. now I'm just like, I just have to watch, so I have to keep my eyes up there, and oh, then wow. I know when it's going. But this is the Invicta Viva section. I am joined by Victor Rodriguez and Dio of Bloody Elbow. For, for whatever the fuck you are, you're on this show. I don't. You know, I don't know what don't else really, you do. I don't know you who you are. Left. I mean, what, you know, you, you pop in from time to time. You're still, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm like I'll pop in to like shit on somebody, <laughs> but. I, 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 I don't know who you are outside of this context. So if you if you have some other like introduction that you want, you, if you want to be Dio from Twitter, then whatever. I you know. I can make that happen. He's the guy I, who picks up the straight singles at the at the strip club. Now he's you know he's 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 he's, he's international. I right? have he's done got that accolades. Actually. He's got other accomplishments. <laughs> All right. right. Go by one of my many AKAs. <laughs> <laughs> we are here to talk about Invicta FC 17. Tanya Evinger versus Colleen Schneider for the bantamweight title. And Olivia Hanata Sousa versus Angela Hill for the strawweight title. A couple of good fights on top of a card that is otherwise... Eh, yeah. It's fine, but not a lot even that that I recognize on here. So I'm trusting both of you two to get me through this, except that Dio has told me that he is totally unprepared. <laughs> so we are leaning heavily on Victor for these early fights. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, or joining me. Thank you both for joining me. There's no us here. There's only me. Um, okay. Ah. And uh, Vic, Vic, what are your thoughts on this card? I want you. I want to lead off with a little positivity, and I know that you're always bringing the positivity. Well, among other things, I bring that are not as good. But but fine. Um, putting that aside, this is very much what appears to be structured as an action card first and foremost. You know, a lot of these names, some of these names you may not recognize. A few of them, or most of them, are in victim mainstays, people that we've seen in a few events before. And uh, it's very clear that they're, you know, this is this is how the sausage is made. You know, you have your, your UFC fight nights where some of these uh, lower-tier fighters show up, and this is how they build their record so you can eventually see them on pay-per-view and bigger things. Well, that's what's going on with some of these fighters that we're seeing here to the, that are going to be competing on Saturday. So while it may not have as big uh, a scale in terms of name value as some of the other cards, it does at least have the uh, two title fights at the top rounding it out, and everything does seem like it's made... They, they really seem to be banking on the styles, really making the fights, and having this be a pretty enjoyable event. So uh, it, it, it seems very likely to play out that way as well, too. You know, so... All right, that's Vic's lovely positivity. Now, Dio, come at me with your old man shit. Um, people are fighting. <laughs> there is a gigantic woman that is fine fighting. Um, the Undertaker, Tanya Evinger, is also fighting. That's a thing. No, nothing else. That's as got, far as you carry you know, in this. Yeah. Okay. Shannon Sin has like really interesting eyes. <laughs> You knew what you were getting into. <laughs> Heaven help me here, people. Anyway, well, on that note, let's jump straight into the first fight on this card. Laura Ho Ho uh, Howarth. I I want to now that I've like watched all these Polish prospects starting to come over and all this regional MMA. I immediately am like Laura Howarth. Yeah. And yeah. now, Lo I Laura Howarth. But that's because I just watched Game of Thrones. But. <laughs> And Alexa Connors, Vic, why don't you start us off? Because we know where all the talent is today. <laughs> all right. Well, Laura Howarth was, um, and Victor made a fair amount of noise when uh, they signed her. You know, she seems to be a pretty promising uh, up and comer out of the UK. Currently, four and one as a professional, and she was also a contestant on the Ultimate Fighter uh, that season twenty um, bit that they had. She lost in the opening round to Jessamyn Duke. Uh, the only other notable opponent she's had as a professional is Lena Landsberg, who she lost to as well. So she's still getting things together, um, you know, just at that point of her career where I guess she's still 
building, you know, so she hasn't really, you know, there's not really going to be much um, notable just yet. She is going to be taking on Alexa Connors, who's making her professional debut. Uh, had a loss as a professional to Lloyd Irvin, uh, Talents, and Jara Eubanks, and uh, actually um, beat Andy Nguyen, for the, uh, who is now currently King of the Cage champion. Um, not much really out there just yet for Alexa Connors, other than the fact that, you know, she does seem to have pretty basic striking and a tendency to get into some crazy wild firefights. Um, don't know how that's going to work out, because Howarth seems to have something similar as well. And they both have pretty decent submission defense. It seems like they're banking on keeping this standing and just going all out stand with, with, their, uh, with their striking. So, yeah, it's kind of a toss-up. Dio, what can you add to that? This is essentially them feeding somebody to Howarth, Howarth, however you say it. Like, I couldn't, like I said, like Vic said, you really can't find much out there about Connors. Uh -huh. So it's, from what I can see, looking at this from an MMA perspective, even a boxing perspective as well, like, this is just something to help build a fighter up. And that's what Invicta seems to be doing a lot lately is actually building these personalities and, you know. Yeah, they, I think they realize about more they, don't, they don't necessarily, you know, they're not going to have a very deep field to work with, especially if the UFC decides to open up that 125-pound division. So right. whatever they can get, they've got to kind of protect, take that uh -huh. strike force route and really say, these are our stars, these are the people that we want to invest in, let's see what we can make th happen for them. Um, I don't believe there are any odds on this fight, in fact. Let me Probably see. <laughs> no. Like, Sure Dog still has Alexa Connors at 0 0 and 0 with one amateur loss, so it's really not yeah, going to be much no, they can't say. Sure Dog is not. Um, when yeah, it's not to, accurate. When it comes to amateur <laughs> bouts, they're not very. Yeah. Yeah. All they right. Try. So we're going to move right along to Rachel Ostovich versus Ariel Beck. And Dio, you know anything about this fight? Not about, not okay, much Vic, about Ariel. What do you know about this fight? <laughs> Vic has all the facts. Vic, you're no. on. You're, you're on. You're up now. All right, Rachel Osovich. Muff the pun. Rachel Osovich, who we've seen before, very, very promising Hawaiian talent. She's, you know, got really good boxing. Um, pretty, really, really good uh, ground game as well. She's, she's really getting into more of a well-rounded game than anything else. There's nothing that's totally. Um, there's not one aspect of her game that really outshines the other, so she's just very durable, very good athlete as well. Unfortunately, she did kind of run into that buzzsaw that's known as uh, KGB Lee uh, in her last bout. Um, you know, she is currently two and two. She's a lot better than her record, sir. a lot better than the record looks. Um, yeah, and and she's just had some really really good performances. She does have another loss to Jenny Lou Shriver, which was uh, her pro debut in Hawaii. But she does have a win over Eva Johnson uh, as well as back in uh, 2014, first Invicta fight. And she also an amateur win over J.J. Aldrich from 2013. So that actually does say something about where she stands. Mm -hmm. um, Ariel Beck is a bit more of a worrisome thing because she hasn't really beaten any notable opposition. She's currently 4-2. She also has a loss to Andrea Lee back in Legacy. And... Um, the other fight she had back in 2014. Now, a uh, curious thing about her is that she seems to be, um, you know, day, lo day late, dollar short type thing. You know, she's she's just very durable. She takes some, some pretty heavy shots, but she keeps coming forward. Uh, unfortunately, her last win was a DQ win. Her opponents are currently standing. Let me see. What's that? This one's 6 and 8. The other one's 0 and 1. Uh, you got another one here who's also 0 and 1. So you know it's not really that she's uh, she's not a bad fighter, but she's going to be taking on a, a, a big step up here, and Ostevich should definitely be running away with this. Right. <clears throat> you got anything else to add to that idea now that now that you've heard it? <laughs> yeah. Like it's like what he said. <laughs> Vic said everything. Like it. This is like the few little clips. That's the thing. Like when you look on a lot of these. With WMMA or women's MMA, whatever you want to call it, it's hard to find like clips of a lot of them, and even like just finding proper records. Like just the fact that you know most people, when you go for an MMA record, where do you go to? You go to Sure Dog. Sure Dog has like 
when it comes to women's MMA, like there's this is like 07 sure dog, you know, mm-hmm. where you might have one or two of the actual fights that actually happen with people. So like Ostovich is she's a you know, she's good at a lot of things, master of none. So like She's going to be a hard out for no matter who it is. And for somebody who has had, like, eh, kind of questionable competition, it's not going to be, you know, it's going to be a hard, <laughs> it's going to be hard for her to get this one. Absolutely. There are also no odds on this fight. I'm a little actually surprised about that since Ostovich is at least somewhat of a known quantity. Um, that brings us straight to Christine Stanley and Shannon Sin and Dio. I am going to let you start this because I know you, you, you I know about this fight, so you must know something. I, I got another fight, you know. So um, Shannon Sin is very, like, I guess to say, it would be like very workmanlike performance when it comes to a lot of her fights. Uh, Christine Stanley, a lot of you saw her like <laughs> spinning hurricane kick KO that uh, went across Twitter and Facebook and things of that nature. And she is prone to doing, you know, some flashy shit. So, like, uh, I would have to go with Stanley on this one because, like, Shannon Sin doesn't really shine, for, in my opinion, doesn't really shine at anything spectacularly. Like, she's, okay, I'm, good at, I'm pretty good at this, I'm kind of good at this, I'm kind of good at this too, but... There's nothing that's like, you know what? This is going to be her strong suit that she's going to be able to use in this uh, bout. So I'm going to go with Stanley on that one. Vic. Pass it over to you, Vic. How are you today? <laughs> oh, I'm just fantastic, thoughts? sir. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, all right. So Shannon Sin, as you mentioned, workmanlike is actually a pretty good way to put it. You know, she, she's uh, very much a, um, you know, a clinch and make the opponent carry her weight type fighter. Uh, very basic with her boxing, very durable, doesn't check leg kicks very much. Uh, she can take a hell of a shot too, but um, I'm not so sure that that's going to work out in her favor because Christine Stanley hits really, really hard. Uh, Stanley's 4-1 and one is a professional. I don't really hold that against her just yet. Uh, she doesn't have an amateur record, and she did lose to Justine Kish by armbar and RFA. Uh, though she did beat uh, veteran Lawrence Salazar back uh, last year by TKO. I mean, she's just been hitting people super hard, and um, you know, just it, it's it's one of those rare. Um, I don't know. I, I'm gonna guess that she's got a lot of bone density or something, because she's she's just deceptively strong when it comes to how she hits. Also, she doesn't really. Um, I think that if if Sin tries to do that clinch wrestling game, she's probably going to get shucked off uh, at some point. Uh, Sin is currently two and two as a professional, but five and one as an amateur. She did have that loss to KGB Lee, and she did have her win against um, somewhat newcomer Maureen Riordan in her last fight. So it doesn't really look that good for Sin. Um, Stanley seems like she's got the, the the tools and skills here to put her away on the feet. Yeah, uh, I mean, it de- seems just uh, definitely seems like she's one of those fighters that's kind of she fights with her with power, like that's her core, core skill set is strength, and yet it doesn't translate into punching power. So it's like I'm just gonna try I'm gonna try to out Hulk you in the cage, but I don't actually have the tools to then put you away. Right. Which that mm-hmm. that that's kind of a tough that's a tough row to hoe in MMA, frankly, because you meet a lot of people who are just as tough and strong as you are, and if you're not actually hurting them really badly, then you tend not to win fights. Yeah, it's a lot like a lot of those videos of like little kids or animals. Like when they go and they mess with something, they're like, "Oh, whatever this is, I can take it." And then it's like, "Oh shit, I immediately regret my decision." <laughs> that is what's going to happen here, <laughs> because if yeah. sin. Like you said, if she can't, she's going to get shucked off. And when she gets shucked off, she's going to get hit with something that is unorthodox and flying. And it's going to be fucking bad. It, it doesn't even have to be. That's the worst part. It could just be like a straight left. And it's it, and it could be game over. Yeah. Well, hopefully, it'll turn, hopefully that'll, that'll make it an exciting fight. And it just doesn't end up being like sin with three rounds of cage pressure. Oh, God, no. 
Unfortunately, there aren't any odds on this fight either. We are finally getting to the odds part of the card next. So if you're gambling, I don't know if those odds are going to go live right before the fight or if they're just not going to exist at all. I cannot help you on that. Yeah, they'll probably just do it for the main two fights, and that's it at right. this rate. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it, after, after this scene, everything else on the card has odds after oh. that. So. Oh. Next up is Amanda Bell versus Megan Anderson in a uh, featherweight bout, I believe. And uh, Vic, why don't you take this one? I really like this fight. This 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 has uh, the makings of being fun. Um, Amanda Bell, five and one as an amateur. All of her wins were finishes, and three and three as a professional. Uh, she did have that fight against Jessamine Duke as an amateur, which she won. Uh, she's got decision losses to Tamika Brents and Charmaine Tweed. Uh, she did uh, have that loss to um, Faith Van Duyn as well by uh, Rear Naked Choke. But she does have wins against uh, Maria Hugard and Brittany Elkin, and she did have that KO from hell against Marina Shafir. God uh, damn it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. She hasn't fought since last April, but she just has, you know, it's not always the prettiest striking, but her timing is just really, really amazing sometimes. When she's on... And she really puts that hurt on people. It's it looks great. Uh, meanwhile, you've got Anderson, who we saw five and two as a professional um, with two submissions. She did have that loss to Cindy Dandois by triangle, which isn't her fault because Dandois really is. You know, you try to play the submission grappling game against someone who's a really really good grappler um, and who's actually improving as well due to her time at Syndicate. Well, that's that was kind of that wasn't as much of a surprise. Right. Um, she did have that last uh, win against uh, Amber Liebrock, which was a far more sensational fight than it should have been. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I really do think you should check it out because it, it was um, there's a lot of digging deep going on in that one on both ends. Yes. So, hell of a fight. Uh, <laughs> great, great work here putting these two together. Even though Bell may be, Bell's going to be a little undersized here. And, I mean, pretty much Probably anyone that Anderson fights is going to be... Time. A little undersized because she's like well, like five ten, five eleven, and she's usually fighting women that are like about maybe five five and have a far less reach. But uh, <laughs> this this could be a hell of a lot of fun, and I, I do trust that Anderson should be able to you know work the range and, and do things from there because she's not she's not like and we've talked about Jessamine Duke and Peggy Morgan before these long rangey fighters that can't seem to use their range because they probably don't train with people that that uh, know how to use range yeah. that, that help them right that help them work on that so. Uh, th this isn't that kind of thing. Anderson seems to have at least flashes of where that's going to go. It's, again, she's still building. She's still young and coming up. So uh, I, I do expect her to be able to, to do something with that, and Bell will not go away quietly. So this is definitely going to be great. What are you picking? I'm going to have to go on it with Anderson on this one. Despite her um, inex relative inexperience, uh, I, I really do think that she's going to be able to fight a little smarter here. It should be noted, too, that especially since a lot of MMA gyms and well, and a lot of, uh, you know, the, the sort of like baseline skill set for MMA striking is Muay Thai, what ta being tall and lanky is really best for in Muay Thai is being a great clinch fighter. So, yeah. you know, a, a lot of these tall fighters, they come up learning to be really great clinch fighters, and that's what we tend to see more a lot more of is where you can really leverage that height and length. So it's not even necessarily a, a thing of, like, not training right to use your length. It's just the application that a lot of that, that a lot of gyms are really looking for for these fighters is not range, it's leverage. Right, like, they don't use the traditional, like, boxing ideals of range as a, you yeah. know, like, it's, oh, well, you know, we're in a cage so you can... Get them against a fence and clinch. So yeah. 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 Right. On that note, Dio, what do you read on this fight? You pick uh, an answer too. Two things: Amanda Bell hits hard as shit, and Megan Anderson is big as shit. So start off with that. Um, uh, with Amanda Bell, you know, Vic, with all his technical know-how and wizardry and shit. Uh, yeah, Amanda Bell, she hits really hard. When she's on, she's Great. When she's off, she's just as bad as she is good. So, uh, like, most notably, probably when she, you know, used Marina Shafir's head like a basketball on an and one mixtape, 
that was bad. But with Megan Anderson, she does kind of have a tendency to get hit, but in her last fight, she recovered really well after getting her bell rung. And she will very quickly put you up against the fence, and that's a lot of weight to have leaning against you, especially somebody, you know, Bell's height. So Bell's 5'8", and Anderson is like a legit six foot tall. So that could nullify, you know, if, she, if it does get into a firefight and Anderson does get tagged, very quickly she will put her up against the fence and lean there and just drain her battery. So I'm going to go with Anderson on this one just because she does have that recovery skill, but she's also pretty good at using her range. It's not like the traditional way of using, like in boxing things, but she does understand that, you know what, I am big as shit, so I am going to fight like I am big as shit. <laughs> well, she keeps a wide base, which is a, lo a great way to lower your height mm -hmm. and fire off long-range shots. That's a big problem that a lot of really tall guys have, is that they tend to stand straight up and down in that Muay Thai kind of stance. Yeah. Which just means that their head is like this big target up on a pole. Goddamn and, Stefan Struve. Shit. Yes. Stefan Struve being the prototype of that. So when you see, you know, tall fighter, like fighting long is much more important than fighting tall. If you're going to be a rangy fighter, you want to be, you, you want to fight wide. Like you want to have a wide base, lower yourself down. So you're like head height with the person and then your reach is way further than theirs is. Right. Rather than punching down from up on high and just offering a target. Yeah. So she does do that. I think that makes her a lot more effective in that way. The odds on that fight, Amanda Bell is plus 125, Megan Anderson minus 165. So not a heavy favorite, but Anderson is coming in as a favorite, definitely. It also does look like, just from the marketing stuff and... Just looking at like the pictures and how you know likes on Facebook and things happen, Megan Anderson is very quickly becoming the face of Invicta. Yeah. Um, they have like if, just if you go by like statistics of you know likes on whenever like Esterlin and them put their pictures out, it's always like a landslide in who gets you know the amount of likes and so on. And then just on like when they do you know, like a promo picture or anything like that, Megan Anderson has been used on those a lot more than the other fighters have. So, that's you know, interesting. Something. I you have know, not look. paid any attention to that at all, so I'm interested to hear that. Because and Anderson, like, I, I have an idea of who she is. I watched a couple, a little bit of tape on her, but she, I hadn't really she's seen got a any look. of that. She's got a look. She's got a cool she personality. Um, and... She's not. She's good, and not only that, Cyborg's left officially pretty much. I mean, yeah, she right. might come back or whatever, but it doesn't matter. You need a new face for that division. Right. Why not her? Yeah, I'm yeah. It's like, there you go. Do it. Capitalize with what you got, man. Work with it. All right, and that brings us to Latoya Walker versus Charmaine Tweet. Dio, what are your thoughts? Uh, I have seen Latoya Walker fight a few times before, I don't remember a fucking thing about it. <laughs> Charmaine Tweet, very much a journey woman. Um, like, she beat the fuck out of, uh, what's her name, Veronica Rothenhausler a few yep. uh, years back, yeah. and then she got fucking torched by Cyborg and then she fought some other people on, you know, the indie circuit and things of that nature. But, um, you know, really good clinch, pretty decent striking. Latoya Walker, like I said, I don't remember a fucking thing about it. Like, it's just, like, eh, very non-distinct <laughs> from what I do remember. Vic, I know you probably have, like... So you're picking tweet with, without question, right? I guess so, maybe. <laughs> like, but the thing about tweet is... <laughs> She's like I can't just say, oh yeah, I'm gonna pick Tweet. Like it could be. Well, the thing with Tweet, I'm I'm just gonna jump in here since you're yeah. struggling on this, is that she seems to like when she doesn't have the obvious physical edge, she's right. strong. Yeah, like, and you know her physical edge is are Cyborg and Julia Budd, you know, yeah. and those are as physical as you get for women in this sport. Yeah. Um. 
but I don't see anything to suggest that she won't have, if not the strength advantage over Latoya Walker, a speed advantage and a like just a general sort of size and pressure advantage. Mm-hmm. All right, Vic, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, you know, there, there's something pretty interesting with what with Leonardo, though. I mean, it, it it is kind of funny that Latoya Walker doesn't seem to have any standout, super memorable performance. And it's funny because I keep seeing people tout her as like, oh man, Latoya Walker, she'd be the one to beat Cyborg. She'd be the one who could step up and at 145 and do that. I'm like, how exactly? I mean, you you know, yeah, she's got a solid, very solid boxing base and she's like sturdy, you know, she's got a pretty, um, you know, she's got a pretty body type, you know what I mean? Like she's, she's, she seems like she has the durability, but I mean, what you know, her ground game doesn't scream like, oh yeah, okay, she's not, she's not as complete, and would she survive that kind of bum rush? And not only that, she's losing to people that, well, I shouldn't say that she hasn't lost yet, but she's she's put in some spots uh, against some fighters that you go, yeah, I, I don't know how that was supposed to be um, indicative of her being able to transcend past this. I, I mean, right. she does have, she's currently five and zero as a professional, one knockout, one TKO. Uh, notable wins against Peggy Morgan by decision as well as Brittany Elkin by decision. Now, she couldn't put away Peggy Morgan. And, I mean, you know, someone who we just, we just were just talking, you know, she doesn't use her range very much, she doesn't hit very hard. You'd think that someone with a boxing base who would do that would... And, look, everybody has an off night. Maybe Morgan was more durable that night. It, it may be a little unfair, but you kind of have to wonder, like, is this really... Is she really... That, that, sing her praises. Is she really about all that? I don't know. I'm not really sure. But on the other hand, you have Charmaine Tweed, who's got more of a Muay Thai kickboxing base. Eight and five as a professional, and she did have some... Uh, she had that loss against Cyborg and went on the Canadian circuit, racked up a few wins to stay busy in the meantime. She also does have losses to Julia Budd and Ronda Rousey, so, I mean, she's faced some very, very good opponents. It's just that, unfortunately, you know, they happen to be on much closer to either elite or close to elite in the case of uh, Bud, I guess, at that time. Right. Uh, Tweed has wins over Amanda Bell by, by uh, submission and the, of course, uh, aforementioned Roth and Hasler fight. A lot better at using her range. You know, like, with the doubts that we had about Megan Anderson, like, that's not going to happen here. Tweed will be able to use her range and um, be able to at least, you know, start attacking the body with kicks and sort of move around because Walker's a lot more stationary, too. So, uh, I definitely think Charmaine Tweed gets this, but uh, they, they, they are obviously expecting a striking showcase. This one may not look as pretty as they might have perhaps wanted, but it's it a big step up for Walker, too. I mean, given her visibility against someone who's fought for the title and who's uh, fought some very legit opposition, so you got that going for you. Yeah. Yeah, well, talk, I mean, Walker's also seven inches shorter than Charmaine Tweed. That is a fucking bad deal. Yeah, and you have to remember though, Tweet. But you know, yeah, you know, you know, Tweet, much like Anderson, is almost six feet tall too. So there's not that many people. Oh, she is. I, I thought Tweet's actually over six feet tall. Well, there you go. She very well might. She's be. listed at six on the nose, but heights are always a little funky. But still, like yeah. Yeah. Tweet is legit. You know, she is a legit featherweight, unquestionably. Yeah, and there's Walker, no Walker would is probably not. You know. Mm-hmm. Like it, yeah. it just so the odds on this are then a bit weird to me. Charmaine Tweet is the underdog plus one fifteen. Latoya Walker the favorite minus one fifty five. <laughs> See that's what happens when you lose to Cyborg. People, like, oh people my just god, think that you are the worst fucking thing on earth. Yeah, after you lose to Cyborg, that is one of no, the worst handicaps. You lose to, to Cyborg in Invicta because it's perceived to be that he's fighting you know so, such subpar opposition. Like okay, all right. Yeah, and and keep thinking that, and when she goes in there and fucking knees Walker's head off, y'all gonna feel stupid. <laughs> yeah, and it's not even like, oh, you know, tweets, you know, she's 39, so like, oh, she's getting up there in age. Toya Walker's 36. Right. Is, like, there's no age upside to any of this. Right. No. And, tweet, and the thing is, Tweet doesn't really have a ton of mileage on her. No. That's the other thing. Like, yeah. a lot of times when you have fighters that have been fighting as long as Tweet has, you know, They've got some city miles on them, and she doesn't. So, you know. Yeah, it, it's 
the odds on this are really weird, and I don't really understand them. If Walker actually beats Tweet, I think that would be a pretty a pretty big upset in my eyes, honestly. Yeah, yeah. The the MMA gambling gods. I tell you, man, the Obama administration has been good to you. <laughs> this is amazing that that's that that's how this. Oh, I mean, e- even Peggy Morgan to Charmaine Tweet is a, is actually a pretty big jump up in talent level. Oh yeah, like yes. Peggy yeah. Morgan's like a fucking pinata as far as like an opponent goes. But, like, it, it is shockingly, to be at a professional level and to be, at, like, not that great, it's, that says a lot. Yeah. All right. That brings us to Kalina Medeiros versus Alain Sirio. I'm only going to guess that I'm saying that right. Close enough. Vic, Vic go after it. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you keep it. That was good enough. All right, so very, very important note right off the top. Kalin Medeiros is replacing Mizuki Inoue. Who was Damn it, man. Strong, I was so Mizuki. ready to see right. Mizuki style on somebody. And that's exactly, yeah. So, I mean, like, while I am very, 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 very disappointed because we love Inoue, I mean, we're not going to make any, uh, you know, we're not, we're not going to hide that. You know, she's just a, a joy to watch. Uh, Medeiros is still a very fun fighter to watch, and she's been kicking around a bunch of organizations in her uh, brief career. Currently six and four as a professional, but she's fought for CES up in the New England scene, reality fighting as well, Victory, Big John, his promotion, uh, and she ended up fighting Sarah Payant, who's also been kicking around the uh, women's scene in Bellator back in June of last year. Um... Notable win was probably against Kathina Katron in Legacy last year. So, I mean, it's those two were like her only two somewhat notable wins. And she does have losses to Peggy Morgan and uh, uh, Chelsea Bailey, who we just no, recently no, saw. No, 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 no. i got to stop you right there. You said Chelsea. Her name is Chelsea Bailey. Right. That Chelsea. <laughs> C H E L dash C. Look, I want to clear something up right now about this whole thing. All right, look, I grew up around white people. You don't scare me. (laughs) Don't surprise me very often, but sometimes, sometimes, I just look at stuff like that. I go, Chill dash C. Yeah. I I couldn't let that. Is that that, that's. that's probably your tag name when you're, like, 11 and you think you're doing graffiti in the bathroom, but, you know, like, no. Yo, that is some Jersey Shore-ass shit if I have ever seen it. I don't even know if that's Jersey. Uh, that doesn't sound like Jersey to me. That sounds like some, you know, I don't know. Hell, I don't, you know, I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. That's, that's, just, that's just, it just opens up so many o- Oklahoma. That's Oklahoma. Oh, Jesus is it? Christ. Okay, well, there you go. Um, anyone surprised? Yes? No? Oh, okay. <sighs> all right, so... <laughs> so, uh, all right, so that's that's at least Medeiros, right? And then you, know, you have Sirio, who's also 6-4. and four. She has losses to Karina Dam. We should know she's been fighting for quite some time. Karina Dam back in 2010. Juliana Lima back in 2010. And two losses to Kalindra Faria. Um... She's only really got one legit win on a record against Elaine Albuquerque, who fights this weekend, curiously enough. And uh, she hasn't fought since April of 2014 in an organization called Gringo Fight. I stopped oh, asking fantastic. questions as of there, and I'm going to leave it right at that when it comes to organizations in Brazil. Because Brazil oh, does shit different. Um, yeah, Medeiros should be able to take this. You know, her takedown game is strong. Her top control is, is pretty... Capable of suffocating, and she is pretty damn hard. It hits hard. So, um, yeah, Serio is going to be undersized. I don't see her taking this. All right. Dia, what do you got to add to that? The one with the, one with the mohawk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, and plus, two years off. Long fucking time. It is. Yeah. Long fucking time in fight years, especially when you haven't had the best of outings against the not-so-great of competition. So, yeah. This was this was cannon fodder for uh, Mizuki Inoue. So, this is in turn going to be cannon fodder for Kalina Medeiros. So. Alright. Gods on this. Agree with you guys. Medeiros is a favorite minus 180. Sirio is the underdog plus 140. No widespreads on this card at all until the main event, frankly. Um, that brings us to the co-main event, however. <clears throat> Livia Hinata Souza versus Angela Hill. 
Uh, Dio, I know you got to be excited about this fight. You can't tell me you're not excited about this fight. Oh, yeah, like, anytime Angie is fucking fighting, I'm going to watch. I'm going to fuck with her. She could be fighting, like, a fucking dog by the bushes. I'm going to watch this year. So, uh, like, as I've said before, with Olivia Hanata Souza, get this out of the way. I don't trust anyone that has fuzzy braids. I just don't. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, as we've come to... Because before she showed up to Invicta, she didn't have exact... Like, we didn't really know. Because it was like, okay, when you come from the Brazilian scene, when you come from the European scene, and especially when you come from Korea or Japan, you never really know the level, the actual level of competition that these people have had. So, but Souza has actually proven that, wait a minute, she's actually a pretty well-rounded fighter. Now... The thing that I'm worried about with her in this fight is that she is can get to be overly confident sometimes in the fights, and she, she's been lucky that she has actually been better than the fighters that she has fought thus far. If she gets too confident with Angie Hill in the stand-up, she is going to be outside looking stupid after this fight. So, did, did you see her quote that she said that she had the other day about how she wants to to, fl to fly like a bee and bite like a fucking cobra, yeah. <laughs> or like kill, kill you like a fucking cobra? Yeah, and it's like, oh god, please, please don't stand in Angie's wheelhouse because she will put you out on the street. It'll be fucking terrible. <laughs> so, as we saw in Angie's last fight, which was just like Jesus Christ, that yeah, I am. I'm going to side with Hill on this one. More of a homer pick than anything else. Mm -hmm. But, eh, you know. She, Dick will have Angela some, Hill like, is firmly one of, one of our Twitter people. For the oh, yeah. people that live on Twitter. <clears throat> yeah, hands down, one of the best Twitter followers yes. in MMA. Even, right. if you're not, even if you're not an MMA fan, you follow her and you will find some pretty amazing stuff. Oh, this shit is hilarious. Right. All right, Vic, what's your pick? Well, eliminating little... Dio's fuzzy braid bias. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This one's a little more complicated because, you know, Souza was fighting not so great opposition before she got to Invicta, came in and just, uh, you know, really immediately made an impression, took, the t uh, took it to Katja Kankanpa, uh, submitting her in, in, in the fourth round of a title fight. Uh, the only real notable wins prior to that were the two wins against Aline Saddlemeyer, and that's not really as big. Uh, she did take on a pretty solid test to get Deanna Bennett in her last bout, who she actually ended up winning um, by TKO against. 9-0 as a professional, 7 submissions. Uh, she's really showing up her striking game and using her range as well. Very, very much uh, likely to put everything she's got into one of those shots and really stagger her opponent. But then she's taking on Angela Hill, who we've established hits really, really hard and, again, takes some very, very serious punishment. Florence, who is a professional, came into the UFC as 1-0, uh, ended, um, ended up winning against Emily Kagan and then had two straight losses. She got released, and now she's just, she's just doing the damn thing here in Invicta. You know, she came in and uh, uh, obliterated Alina Gray, uh, she went up against that last fight against Stephanie Egink and just fucking lit her ass. <sighs> just caught her with that one shot because sometimes that's all it takes. The gray fight was much more of a dismantling yeah. that led to just a really, really ugly finish, but th that, that Egging fight was, was impressive for different reasons. Um, her grappling is not up to snuff, and I don't think that... I'm fairly certain she knows that she's going to be taking on someone with a very, very serious uh, jiu-jitsu pedigree who perhaps may not be uh, as, as good when it comes to uh, takedowns in MMA. Mm. So she would likely want to keep that to her advantage. Um, not only that, but her speed should be an advantage. Maybe she'll be able to weave inside and, and, and land some shots. I, I hope she's going to be able to deal with Sousa's reach advantage, which isn't much of an advantage, but it's something that's there. Mm -hmm. But just by her striking experience alone and the um, caliber of training partners that she's got now, I really do think Angela Hill should be the... F I, if she is the underdog, it shouldn't be by much. You know, it, it, I don't know what the odds are going to look like for this, but Souza still has a very, very good chance to win. There is no guarantee here on this. Right. But um, 
you know, I, I really, right now, I'm going to side with Hill for this one because it just, all right. Yeah, you guys are both riding with the underdog. Hill is coming in at plus 150. Livia Hanata Souza minus 190. Um, if nothing else, I, I, I gotta, you know, I, I gotta echo Dio's sentiments and uh, go ride or die with Angela Hill. You know, yeah. there's you got to be fans of somebody, and yeah. she seems like a good place to put that fandom. And like, and as with her comments that she made recently about, you know, the, the Invicta versus how the UFC, you know, handles their fighters. Like, this is, this is in terms of uh, pro wrestling. Invicta is the developmental league, so like, this is where you go, and you can build up a fan base, you know. Invicta's not like the hugest fan base, but you can build up your fan base. You can, you know, hone your personality and your skill set, and then eventually, because like Angie had a super tough outing in the UFC, like Tisha Torres and Rose Namajunas. Like you have two of the best straw uh, straw weights in the world, you know, back to back. Like that's a she had a really tough road, you know. Had she been, you know gotten some of the lower rung uh, type fighters, then she probably would still be in the UFC, but I think Invicta's probably the best place for her at this time so that she can build herself back up. Because, you know, Rose Namahunas, Tisha Torres, whether you think Tisha Torres is boring or not, she is still, you know, a really high level. And we saw what Rose Namahunas did to Paige Van Zandt. That that was fucking balling. Uh... But yeah. All right. That brings us to our main event. Tanya Evinger, Colleen Schneider, and I believe, Vic, it's your turn to run with this one. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, a little background on Schneider, who's been fighting for quite some time. She's currently 10-6 and six as a professional. And she's got wins, fights way from way back. Uh... Notable losses to uh, Liz Carmouche, uh, Sarah Delelio, Deanna Bennett, and uh, uh, Irene Aldana. But she does have some wins against um, notable Super Fight League talent, Sanya Susevich, uh, regional veteran Brenda Gonzalez, and the uh, win that she had in Pancreas 270 against Brianna Fasori, who's coming up. Uh, she did also have that win, her last fight against uh, Raquel Paluhi in uh, January. But the problem is that, you know, Despite the fact that she didn't look that great in some of those, um, as far as like she's not really finishing these fighters, you know she's clearly winning these fights. You know she's using her um, striking from her out from the outside. She's using her wrestling well. She's using her clinch well. She's doing a lot of things very well. Problem is, you're fighting the closest to a Terminator that you've got in women's MMA right now. Yeah. Tanya Evinger does not seem like she can be stopped. I mean, she's really got the NBA Jam hot hand right here. 17 and five, seven straight wins. Yes, she did have the um, uh, loss uh, trying to get into the Ultimate Fighter house, but that seems to have only made her even better. Um, six submissions on a record, three TKOs, four TKOs, slick ground game, great boxing. She's put everything together now. I mean, just look at some of her more recent wins against people like Nyan Gomez and Cindy Dandwa, both by submission against people that are submission specialists. And then going out there beating hot prospect Irene Aldana, who was, was believed to have a striking advantage, and eliminating her by TKO. Mm-hmm. Penny Kanzad comes over from Europe, and then she TKOs her as well. Look, I don't know how this is supposed to work out in Schneider's favor. I just don't mm-hmm. see it happening right now. Avengers wrestling has been... A lot of people don't don't seem to realize this. It's been more of her based on her striking, and her transitions are just too good, man. I, I just I expect this to be a very good fight, but this is really going to be the Tanya Avenger show. I, I really tune in for this because this is going to be absolutely crazy, and we're really witnessing something great here and seeing someone who uh, was people were going like, I don't know if this fighting thing may be uh, good for you long term. And uh, now she's turning it around and, and making it into this and, and, and beating some of the best talent out there in her division. This is just outstanding. So, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely siding with Avenger here. Dia? Yeah, so when she and I, like, one of the things, like, I remember during watching Tough when she was trying to get on there when, uh, like, Misha Tate was like, yeah, you know, 
whatever is going on in her life, whatever girlfriend she's with right now or didn't <laughs> wasn't with right now, it's going to affect her in the fight. And I think, like, I don't know, maybe when she saw that, when she got back home or whatever it was, but after that, she has been on a fucking tear. Like, and, and it's not like she's kind of sort of beating these people. Like, she is putting, like, grown-ass woman ass whoopings on these people. And I, like, it's hard to see anywhere where Schneider is going to be able to beat Avenger here. Like, you know, Avenger's grappling is great. Her wrestling is really, really damn good. And she's just tough as shit. Like, she's been, first off, she's been around since 2006. Like, let that sink in. She's been around the sport than most men have been in the fucking sport. Like, it is fucking insane. Like, the career renaissance that she's had has been, because she went from being, uh, you know, win here, lose, 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 win, 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 lose, lose, lose. So, so now it's just like, murdering people. Like, I don't see where Schneider can win any of this. Like, her catch wrestling is cool and everything, and, you know, she's had some pretty nice outings, but I don't see shit for her. Yeah, I, I think the thing that, with, for, with, for Schneider, is that when she can be, when she's in there with somebody who's equally as athletic than her, mm -hmm. she's a lot craftier than mm -hmm. her opponent. That she can apply that craft... And she this can shit ain't out it. rounds and <laughs> what? I said this one. This you you can't like yeah. The craftiness goes out the fucking window here. Like <laughs> <laughs> this shit ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Avenger. She's not going to be equally. You know, she's not going to be as physical as Avenger. And then yeah, you can't be craftier than her because Avenger is like that is the big thing with her game is it it has gotten fucking crafty. Like yeah. You know, her wrestling is slick, and she's figured out all all of those little, like, tricks from moment to moment, how to stay busy, how to do damage, how to win rounds, how to rack up points, and how to keep hurting people yeah. all throughout fights. And it just seems like one of those things where it's just taken her a long time to build up all that veteran savvy and then put it to use. Mm -hmm. And now that it she has, it's just really clicking for her. Yeah. So... Like, this yeah. is, like, going from playing, like, uh, like just some regular old RPG to fucking playing Dark Souls 3. Like, this shit is going to be bad. Like, uh, it'll be fun, though. Watch oh, it's going to be fun as hell. Like, to work, it'll be fun. I am going to watch this, like, even though, like, I love Arena Aldana, the ass-whooping that Evanger put on her was goddamn amazing. <laughs> So the odds on this fight, Avenger is by far the biggest favorite on this card. Minus 400 to minus 475. Schneider coming in at minus 275 to plus 325. So. Yeah. All uh, right. It is what it is. Colleen yeah. Schneider, if you if you win this, that would be a massive upset. Yeah. And uh, it's it's kind of weird because she, she I, I mean, given the state of bantamweight and. Just in general, but especially in Invicta, she did earn that shot. I mean, who oh, else yeah, was no. it really? You know, so it's like it, it, it's it's only fair that she got the opportunity to go out there. And you know, I, I God, she's it's, gotten a lot better over the past yeah. couple of years. Like she's yeah. gone from from being somebody who just barely like scrapped it out with people to <laughs> being an actual craftier, talented fighter. Yeah, but she's yeah. climbing uphill, and it's not. You know, this isn't anything against uh, Colleen's talent or anything like that. It's just that Avenger is just that. It, it's almost, it seems really an insurmountable task. Yeah. And, like, if you look back to see the people that she's lost to in the past, say, like, two or three years is when she runs up against somebody that's far more athletic than she is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Deanna Bellet, or Bennett, you know, as unassuming as she looks, is an incredibly athletic talent. And Irene Aldana is, like, goddamn Jaguar. So, yes. you know, that... You know, of course, with Avenger, it's just, like, not the most athletic person, but, like, the craftiness is just, like, on... Well, and, and Avenger's not of... unathletic. She just doesn't right. look... She, the problem for Avenger has always just been that she doesn't look it. Like, you right. never yeah. look at <laughs> well, Avenger and be like, oh, what an athletic specimen. But then you see her perform, and, and like... It's like, well, shit. She's got well, yeah, amazing I mean, cardio, and yeah. she's... 
you know, she's got uh, that kind of tough It's part. the fact that athleticism is multidirectional. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, right. She could. She's not maybe the most explosive. You know, she's not ripped. You know, so it's it's. She has she has attributes that are great. Yeah. She she's got that she she she's got that farm strong. You know, go out and wrestle a hog kind of strength athleticism yeah. to her. Nice. I got Avenger via fucking choke slam. Wow. <laughs> I, I just hope that you know no, nothing has changed in her camp, and she still looks exactly like she rolled off the couch, drank a six pack, and then decided to fight some chicks. I would That's, not be surprised if that is her actual routine. No, it would not be surprising at all. But and the thing like, is, and here's the other thing too: Avenger is still pretty young too. Like she's only yeah. 34. So, like. It's still crazy that she's been fighting for so goddamn long. <laughs> yeah, she's an OG. You know, it's it's weird. Anyway, on that note, that closes the show. Thank you guys for joining me. You can find me on Twitter at these anytime. You can find Vic on Twitter at Vic M Rodriguez. You can find Dio on Twitter at I'm Just Dio. You can find me on me and Vic on Bloody Elbow. You can find Dio wherever the fuck he is. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Give us a like on YouTube. Subscribe to MMANation.com. That's D-O-T-C-O-M. That's our YouTube channel. That way you get all the rest of our shows, interviews, analysis, all that good shit. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Yeah.